So now that you have an understanding of the basics of the female hormone cycle, let's take a, few, a look at a few things that can go wrong with it. Now obviously this is a very intricate and very uh, complex cycle, so there's a lot that can go wrong, but I just want to give you some of the basics and so you can understand some of these things. Now, if you remember from the previous video, basically every event that happens in this cycle is predicated on the event preceding it. So for example, FSH, for it to be produced in the first place, was related to how many hormones were still circulating in the system. The lower the hormones, the higher the FSH. Now conversely, if hormones for some reason don't lower or they're not cleared out at the end of the month, FSH then doesn't respond. So just using that as an example, you can see that every single process in here and every step is predicated on the one preceding it. So let's take a closer look at that. So if, for example, for progesterone to be released, in the quantities that it needs to be, it responds to the amount of luteinizing hormone. So if luteinizing hormone does not, is not made at the right time or at the right quantity, there will not be an adequate amount of progesterone that follows it. However, LH, its timing and its quantity is dictated by the amount of estrogen that occurs or the estrogen that's being released. The amount of estrogen that's being released is predicated on the amount of FSH that's being released and the amount of FSH that's circulating was originally predicated on how many hormones were circulating in the system in the first place. So you can see that if there's an issue in any one of these places, like a domino effect, it impacts everything else. If a woman doesn't have adequate FSH production, she won't have adequate, uh, the follicles being stimulated to be produced and matured, they don't make as much estrogen. If they don't make as much estrogen, they're not going to make as much luteinizing hormone or the pituitary won't. Without adequate amounts of pituitary hormone, progesterone won't be released in its proper quantities. And if these hormones are not cleared at the end of the month, and they're primarily cleared out of the liver through detoxification and metabolism or biotransformation pathways, then again, this cycle can't continue. So I hope that, that some of that makes sense. Now let's look at this a little bit closer look at what can cause some of these issues. If FSH is not being released at the beginning of the month, there's really a couple primary issues for this. One is, as I said, that hormones are not cleared at the end of the month. This is very common in women that have, let's just say a congested liver, that it's not going through its detoxification and clearance pathways of specific hormones as well as it should. If that's taking place, FSH won't be released and the rest of the cycle will essentially suffer. Another thing is that the pituitary hormones, FSH and LH, can be suppressed by various things in the immune system if there's inflammation going on, can be suppressed by stress or high levels of cortisol, for example. And there's even some evidence that things like heavy metals might suppress pituitary function somewhat as well. So if a woman complains of having low estrogen levels, you have to look at FSH. If FSH is low, then you have to consider why. Is it because hormones are not getting cleared out? Is it because of immune system or inflammatory issues going on? Or is it possibly due to things like elevated cortisol? Another issue that can take place, now that we've talked about FSH, is low estrogen. Obviously, if estrogen is low, there's really a couple primary causes. One is that there's not adequate FSH, which we already just talked about. Two is that maybe uh, one month or multiple months is you, act, you literally have bad eggs, that your eggs, your follicles are not making the estrogen that they should be making and that can cause low estrogen in itself. Now obviously that's an issue that you really need to talk with your doctor about to see if that's something that's going on. The next major step is the luteinizing hormone surge. Now again, same as the FSH, luteinizing hormone may not be released adequately if estrogen isn't being made adequately in the first place, or perhaps estrogen is being made, but again, you're having issues with stress and cortisol suppressing pituitary function. Maybe it's, again, inflammation or a variety of things that are taking place there. So if somebody has low luteinizing hormone, possibilities are pituitary dysfunction or some of the events leading up to uh, LH production were deficient. The next major phase, of course, is progesterone production. And again, if we're talking about low progesterone, which a lot of women do suffer from today, a lot of women have what's called uh, estrogen dominance. And estrogen dominance, if it's not being cleared out of the liver primarily, will cause a suppression in progesterone and a number of symptoms, having a difficult time getting pregnant and, and those types of things. But low progesterone can obviously be predicated on low luteinizing hormone, low estrogen, low FSH, all prior to that, could be pituitary issues, or remember that progesterone is being made from this corpus luteum, 
The corpus luteum might have issues and that's not making it as well. Now, I'll be honest with you, low progesterone is more often something that was caused prior to it in the cycle than it is a dysfunctional corpus luteum. And then lastly, if women aren't clearing out their hormones adequately, which is really three phases, then that will cause problems in this as well. Phase one in terms of clean, clearing these out is liver. The liver has to be working properly, biotransformation pathways and detoxification pathways. The second thing is the gallbladder has to be adequately uh, releasing bile and uh, the bile needs to be not very viscous, it needs to be more fluid so that it can actually bind to these hormones that are now cleared out of the liver and take them out and through the digestive tract to be removed really as in bowel movements. And then the third part of that obviously is if, someone, if a woman has any kind of dysbiosis, good to bad bacteria balance uh, issues, then the bad bacteria can actually metabolize the hormones that were designed to be left and leave your body, but those can get recirculated back into you, especially if you're constipated. So if a woman has a sluggish liver, uh, has their gallbladder removed or has poor uh, biliary sufficiency or gall, gallbladder bile movement, is constipated or has dysbiosis, you can pretty much guarantee that there will be some level of hormone dysfunction as well. So that particular woman's hormones may never get balanced until she looks at her liver, gallbladder, gastrointestinal system function as well. So this is a lot. Now obviously, like I said in the previous video, there's more, there's issues with testosterone overproduction, which is usually caused by blood sugar and insulin issues, uh, adrenal issues, cortisol, stress, that can really disrupt the system. But hopefully, that the, the, the take home of this is that it's not as easy as just measuring one hormone at one point in the month and basically putting somebody on pharmaceutical medications or hormone replacement therapy or the pill or those types of things because this system is very complex. There's a lot going on and you really have to look at all the elements of this system if you have hormonal symptoms and you're trying to correct those. I hope you found this video helpful and thank you so much for your time.